afternoon. This autumn, we seem to have seen the wet, mild and windy face that uh, can be associated with this season. In the coming week, relatively speaking, I think we're going to see, rather Janus-like, the other face, a cold, dry, rather frosty week to come. Uh, we're starting off with relatively dry conditions, thanks to an area of high pressure. Uh, that's accounting for much of these uh, dry skies that we see here down towards the south. Further north, there's an area of cloud, uh, and that's all tied in with a set of fronts, which are gradually going to tumble their way around the top end of the high pressure and bring the cloud, wind and rain back in particularly to the western side of Scotland uh, within the next few hours or so. The further south and east you are, the more likely it is after a pretty frosty old start uh, to stay dry but uh, increasing amounts of cloud and then come further south, a lot of dry weather, perhaps just the last of the overnight showers just lurking there down towards uh, East Anglia and the southeast in the latter part of this afternoon. Temperatures just about making it into double figures. And as we come away towards the southwest, well after a pretty wet uh, morning down in the west of Cornwall and indeed in the southwest of Wales, uh, a drier end to the day here with some decent spells of sunshine, lighter winds perhaps, so feeling every bit of the 9 or 10 degrees, increasing amounts of cloud eventually getting into the north and west of Northern Ireland, perhaps the odd spot of rain there. Overnight, the veil of cloud and rain will keep the frost at bay across the northern half of the British Isles, but further south, it is really going to be quite a frosty old night and some mist and fog forming as those winds fall light. So uh, quite a frosty night, perhaps the first you've seen uh, of this particular season. Now that nose of high pressure really is keeping things pretty settled for Monday in the south. Notice the number of isobars in the north, always a very good indication, some very strong winds, uh, and the rain there associated with those fronts, pushing in particularly to the northern isles, the western isles, the northern half of Scotland in the first part of the day, and then rather slow progress to bring the rain further south, down through Northern Ireland, and eventually through Scotland and into the north of England. Rather patchy stuff, uh, nowhere near the strength of winds that we've seen in recent days, nor indeed the amount of rainfall. Quite mild in the north, a rather chilly but bright day in the south for both both England and Wales in the Midlands there. And then on Monday night and into Tuesday, we start bringing that band of cloud and rain that you saw across the north of Scotland further and further south, such that by Tuesday, things will have changed. We'll start moving that wind around for a start into the northwest, so a cooler, fresher, brighter day for Scotland, Northern Ireland, and the north of England, but a, a rather milder day perhaps in the south, but you'll have some rain to contend with, and the temperature's lurking at 12 or 13. Now that progress of moving the wind away from the west and up to the north really continues with a vengeance through the course of Tuesday and into Wednesday. Look at this, it's not just coming from Iceland, it is all the way from the Arctic. It will be a raw day on Wednesday with showers packing in on that wind all the way down across the northern and eastern parts of the British Isles particularly. So these showers turning increasingly wintry, particularly for this northeastern corner of Scotland, but even further south, North Norfolk, I'm sure you'll see some real good old hail showers there. Elsewhere, dry, fine and bright. Thank to the influence of the high pressure, which will gradually topple in during the course of Thursday, killing off the showers Thursday into Friday, chilly by day, and a frost by night as well. So just bear that in mind. Uh, more detail, of course, on the website on dear old C4.